Welcome to St. Bernadette's Missionary Society family. Today, we celebrate the third Sunday in ordinary time. We ask that you please silence your phone and prepare your heart to celebrate the sacred liturgy. This week's second collection is for the Church in Latin America. Those who were in darkness have seen the Lord's great light. Let us rejoice with them and give thanks to God. Our celebrant this morning is Monsignor Ryan. Depressed, 
it's a gloomy where some darkness or other within our lives is bothering us. Let's bring it to Jesus Christ and let him do what he does best, bring us healing. Lord Jesus, you are our light and our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, through your cross and your resurrection, you have taken away the power of darkness and sin in our lives. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, inspire each one of us this week to truly be light for others, especially those most in need. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
A reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispel is darkness. For there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, 
that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Capos, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and, and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light on those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death. Light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise One of the greatest challenges in all of our lives is dealing with personal darkness and emptiness in our lives. Wounds and hurts, some of them the result of conflicts with other people, and some of them are unsettled conflicts that we have in our own hearts. And of course, the question is, how do we deal with that? How do we break out of personal darkness and difficulty when it gets a grip on our lives? And we just heard the words of Isaiah the prophet where he, fore, he foretold a time in the future when all darkness and emptiness would be banished from people's hearts and lives. And we believe that that transition began when Jesus Christ came to earth to live among us. When you read the Gospels or you listen to Gospel passages, it's very clear that the very light of God shone through Jesus Christ. 
He changed the lives of so many people that he met, helping them in difficulty in many different ways. And we also learn from the Gospel that Jesus taught his followers how to become really good human beings. And he also taught us that the best way to break out of personal darkness was to begin a life of service, a life focused on others rather than just oneself, to try and help others in their struggles and hardships, to practice mercy and forgiveness, and to go the extra mile with somebody who is in need. And some people might say, well, maybe for somebody else, not for me. I want to live my life my way and use my time and energy the way I want to use it. And I don't want to open myself up to being this do-gooder out there where people will use me and abuse me. So is Jesus when he tells us that service is the way to inner happiness and freedom from darkness. How do we know it's true? Let me tell you a little story this morning since we're in the football season where the playoffs are taking place. It's most appropriate to talk about a football player who really proved this through difficulty in his life. His name was Darrell Stingley and he was a star wide receiver for the New England Patriots back in the 1970s. They were playing a preseason match with the Oakland Raiders. It really didn't count for anything. But he was tackled in that game and he suffered a devastating spinal injury. And in the years that followed, he was in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. In the years that followed, he was played, as one might expect, with anger and resentment and depression. However, he subsequently overcame all of that. And he said it began to happen only after he stopped asking time and again why. He learned to trust God to show him light in the darkness of his life. In his own words, he said he, he experienced a spiritual rebirth that enabled him to show light to other people. He would regularly visit people in hospital who were paralyzed, bringing them hope and courage from his own life story. He grew up in Chicago, and in 1993, he established a nonprofit to help inner city youth. He lived a really good, inspiring life. And it all came from realizing I have to stop looking inward and depressing myself, and I have to reach out and see what can I do today and tomorrow for people around me who, for whatever reason, are down and in darkness. And so the message is very simple. Wherever we're struggling with darkness, and for some people, this may go back a long way in their lives. For others, it may be something that has come up in the last weeks or months. But if we're going to move beyond that and not continue to be an angry, depressed person saying, life isn't just fair. We have to take Jesus at his word. We have to say, I may do a certain amount of service for others right now in my life, in my life but where, where can I find a little something extra to do? 
for somebody who's struggling. And let's not just think about that. Let's go ahead and do it. Let us please stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, the whole things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born in the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me. Consubstantial of the Father, through him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the cross of hell. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He is the king of heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. We will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will die for men. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one who holy Bible and the Apostolic Church. I confess one of the baptism for the forgiveness of I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the Lord and God. Amen. As we pray for our needs this morning and the needs of our society, let us remember the response to the song that we make. The Lord is truly my light and my son. For leaders who will take the time to withdraw in prayer, who know the needs of their people and present them to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord For communities who seek ways to shine with God's love and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who find themselves in prisons of oppression or misunderstanding, we pray to the Lord. For those who are doing their best to respond faithfully to God's call in their lives, we pray to the Lord. For those who are searching for light in the darkness, for healing in a time of illness, and for peace in a time of division, we pray to the Lord. For the dearly departed, especially for Gerald Caroga, for whom this Mass is offered, may they rest in the peace of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord God our Father, as we gather together to express our thanks to you for sending, we know that he wants us to go a step further. He wants us to Holy Spirit, enable us to answer yes to Him, for He is Lord forever and ever.
giving thanks that you have found us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Myron our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may learn to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, and I want to save the earth and my soul shall be you. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to a new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The parish is going to relaunch Family Promise and Miriam Rooney and Laurie Ader would like to talk to you for a few moments about this. Good morning, I'm Miriam Rooney, this is Lori Eager, and together we are the volunteer coordinators for our parish for the Family Promise Ministry. Homelessness, we see evidence of it for all around us, and if you're like us, it breaks your heart to see the disability division some of our brothers and sisters have to endure. Yes, it is a complex problem, and we often feel helpless to do anything. But there is something you can do. Get involved with the Family Promise Ministry here at St. Bernadette. Family Promise is a nationwide interdenominational nonprofit that serves families that are experiencing homelessness. It is a small family focused program which helps adults meet their housing goals and keeps kids' safety and well being a top priority. Our parish has partnered with Stockton Covenant Church just down the street to host the families four times during the year. Dr. Covenant has the space to house the families and we pitch in with other means of support, such as providing meals, talking with guests, and playing with children, setting up accommodations, staying overnight, laundry tasks, and coordinating donations. The families arrive at Dr. Covenant on a Sunday evening. They're welcome and serve a warm dinner. The evening is spent talking with families, playing or helping children, with Homer. Each family has its own room to spend the night. Overnight volunteers arrive around 8 o'clock and also have separate rooms to spend, to spend there. Families get up early, have a simple breakfast, and are transported to the day center. From there, the kids are taken to school. There are facilities for showering and the adults work with the caseworker to help them achieve their financial employment, child care, and housing needs. With the in the evening, they return to the church and repeat this process for the next week. At the end of the evening, they return to the church and repeat. Oh, sorry. Uh, at the end of the week, the beds are taken down, packed up, and moved to the next house site, and the process repeats. Both Miriam and I have been involved in this ministry over the past year. We found it to be really rewarding. The families are so appreciative. And it just feels good to be able to help one family at a time. We were all able to celebrate with one mother and her three children who came through the program last year. As a result of family promise, the mother was able to finish her high school diploma, obtain her very first job, and was connected with affordable housing resources. Through one of the community partners, the entire family received eye exams and much needed prescription glasses. After graduating from the Family Promise Program, they moved into an apartment where the children now have their very own beds. What a change from couch surfing, doubling up with friends, and sleeping in shelters for this family of four. We also experienced the gratitude of another family new to the program who had been sleeping in their car. Change is possible, and we can be Christ's hands and hearts in this service. And I was so moved by Monsignor's words today and how fitting it was with what we were trying to do. Uh, and maybe your hearts will open up and this might be a place where you could serve. There are many ways to participate in this ministry. None is too difficult from small tasks to larger things. Um, as an added benefit, you get to know wonderful people in our own parish and in our neighboring church, Stockton Covenant. 
We, Mary and I will be at the table outside after Mass to answer questions and take your names if you're able to help. We'll organize an information and training meeting prior to our church's first rotation, which will happen in March. We thank you for considering being a part of this. Pete and Ben's scripture study has commenced again every Monday at 5 p.m. in the parish hall. Saturday, February 25th, after the Vigil Mass, the parish will be hosting a Mexican fiesta. More information to come. Second collection this coming weekend is for St. Vincent Paul. There is some information in the bulletin about youth ministry and the event that we'll be hosting, so please take the time to read it. Last week, I think you were asked to bring your Bibles to church so that on this Sunday, we would bless the Word of God and emphasize its importance not only in church life but in family life. So if you have brought your Bibles today, please stand. We ask you to hold the Word of God close to your heart. And even if you haven't brought one today, let this moment be a reminder that Bibles aren't just home decoration. It's the power of the Word of God. It needs to be read often as a family. The Holy Bible you hold in your hands is the inspired Word of God. As Catholics we believe, this is the book of the Church, the sacred literature of God's people. Our church encourages us to read and reflect frequently on the pages of this book so that we may be continually formed into, into committed disciples of Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit encourage us to give greater honor to our Holy Bibles. May we enthrone them in a place of honor in our homes commit to frequent reflection on these pages. And all of us say together, come, Holy Spirit, enkindle in us the fire of your God. So let us pray. Saving God, you have revealed your life and your love through the lives of our ancestors in the faith, from Abraham and Sarah, Moses and David, to Mary and Joseph, to Peter and Paul, you have spoken your word and called your people to a fuller life. We honor your presence in these scriptures, and we pray that the words of this sacred book may become more deeply the living word of God, forming our thoughts, desires, and actions. We ask your blessing on these holy Bibles in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we think of service, let us, as all of us, thank our choir for beautiful music which inspires us. And finally, before we continue the blessing, I'd ask you to keep Monsignor Moore in your prayers. As you know, he went through cancer treatments nine years ago, which included a lot of radiation. And he has, he has lost almost 90% of the hearing in one ear where <coughs> the radiation took place. But more bothersome is that he has developed an infection in the bone of the ear. Uh, he has no cancer, but this infection is painful. 
and it's difficult to get rid of it. He has a team of doctors at UCSF taking a look at it and trying to come up with a treatment that would work. So he asked me to let you know, and he would be so grateful if you would say a little prayer for him each day. Please stand for the country of blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, the love and serve the Lord, and one another. Thank you, God.